um, uh, worldwide, help people uh, with it worldwide. So we came up with this new name after inventing MageBridge. We came up with the name uh, Herio. And now at the moment, Herio is um, an English website, mainly oriented on MageBridge, but also oriented on Joomla, Magento, and for instance, also migration tool called uh, VM to Mage, Virtumart to Magento. So basically, every time when you want to combine Joomla and Magento, we try to cover that uh, area. Uh, what we also do is offer a lot of tutorials, because in the Netherlands we were always uh, based on uh, consultancy, doing a lot of technical work, but basically to tell other people how to do that as well. So we were always developing uh, PHP code, well, to explain to other people how to, read, uh, how to write uh, PHP code uh, properly. And that's what we also did with uh, Yurio, just write two tutorials for uh, well, technical uh, implementators like, uh, like you. So that's a little bit the mindset of, uh, of uh, Yurio. Um, now, I wrote down that list and I decided to also put in this, this slide, which is, uh, well, more or less readable. Um, and I decided that to change the whole presentation because of the presentation yesterday on Tienda. Because if you have two e-commerce systems, Tienda, well, three actually, Virtumart, Tienda, Magento, sooner or later you have to make the comparison. Um, I don't want to see it like I have to convince you whether to use Tienda or Virtumart or uh, Magebridge. But at least I can make some kind of comparison between Virtumart, Tienda and Magebridge and why there are three different kinds. Um, well, to begin with, I already explained like a little bit on Virtumart and it's a little bit outdated. And once you've worked with it, uh, you can see the, the shortcomings of it. And actually, I'm very happy that there's now a Tienda solving all these shortcomings of Virtumart. And I would say that uh, within one year, a couple of years at least, um, Virtumart will be gone and will be completely replaced with Tienda. But there's another thing as well, and that's called Matrix. Um, Matrix is more about Magento than it's about a Joomla e-commerce system. Because actually what we did was to say, well, we have this most popular CMS called Joomla, but we also have this most popular e-commerce system called Magento. And Magento is, is in, in, well, in, in large numbers, it's just taking over this, this whole uh, open source market. So the next question would be, uh, why? Why do people choose for Magento and not well, another solution? And I think um, these, uh, these uh, items are more or less explaining a little bit more about why Magento is so uh, popular. And the most important thing is, for instance, the back office integration. Because Magento is popular not for building a small web shop of five or ten products. Now it's very popular if the, the amount of products goes into the ten thousands. So if, you, if you're talking about e-commerce um, where, where there's, a, there's a revenue of a couple of million uh, dollars a year and there's a couple of million products as well, well forget about the end because then Magento is actually aiming for that market. So it's, it's a different perspective you have to see and also if you have such a revenue in your shop, you also want to integrate it with a very expensive ERP system. Well, those of you who attended the Tienda talk might have noticed <coughs> that the word back office did not appear in the presentation. And that's a different point of view. Basically, if you want to have a simple web shop up to a certain point, and I'm not going to discuss what, what point it exactly is, but up to a certain amount of products, a certain amount of hits, a certain amount of customers, then Tienda is fine. But if you want to keep on growing, if you want to serve the enterprise system, Actually, Magento is the perfect system for that. Just because Magento is aiming for that market. Um, well, also the extensibility of uh, Magento is uh, kind of cool. You can write third-party extensions. Uh, the theming bit is based on a parent-child uh, model, which means you take uh, a, an original theme and you only have to modify those parts that you want to have modified. So if you want to override a certain template, you only need to copy that template. So it's Kind of a, a Joomla template override, but the main difference is that with Magento there are a couple of thousand of templating files in the default theme, a couple of thousand, a couple of hundred. So 
So there are a lot of theming uh, files, and that offers a lot of uh, flexibility. There's also something called the event system. Um, that's also known in Joomla. In Joomla, you have the plugin events. So you have Joomla plugins, and every Joomla plugin, like a user plugin or a system plugin, is listening to a certain amount of events. Well, the same principle also applies to Joomla or to Magento, but then the event system is just generating a lot more events. So if you calculate, if you count up all the events in Joomla, you add up maybe up to 30 or 40 system events. Within Magento, that's adding up to 1,000 events. So it's very flexible again. With one downside, and that is performance. Because all of this flexibility is asking also a lot of resources, is asking for a lot of checks, and because of those checks, uh, the system is just, well, uh, performing less, or the system requirements are a lot higher than with uh, a Joomla site. And again, if you talk, ser if you talk about serious e-commerce, um, if, you, if you look at the costs uh, that you want to spend, or the money you want to make out of e-commerce selling products, then actually Tienda is again in the first level of e-commerce if you want to make a profit but also have uh, a different business uh, to serve. But actually uh, Magento is aiming for a higher market and then actually the hosting costs or the costs to, to optimize the hosting environment <coughs> are peanuts. So talking about a dedicated server, if you have a dedicated server and you put a little bit of optimizing into Magento, Magento is suddenly very fast. So that's also one of the points, uh, clustering, I just wrote it down as like a, a familiar term, but actually it refers to scalability. Um, with Joomla, well there's nothing to scale, but with Magento, Magento itself is offering a lot of different ways to do clustering. So one example would be that you actually have one uh, Magento instance being served from various databases. While with Joomla, in the configuration, you can only define one uh, single database. So out of the box already, Magento offers a lot of clustering effects, and uh, actually Joomla doesn't. So that's, that's like the, the perspective to put uh, Joomla and Magento um, in. Um, and then talk about Matrix. Um, we started developing uh, Matrix um, about one and a half years ago. It took half a year to, um, to uh, build up. Um, uh, functionality, which, uh, which could be could be called uh, stable. So in June the last summer, um, we released it. We released uh, core functionality. We released uh, also the, the functionality official integration, and we played uh, JFusion to be unsecure. And because of that, it was a complete play. Um, so there was a, well, a lot of things were going on, and we learned, of course, a lot from it. And we learned, for for instance, that the core functionality. Um, we took some time to develop it, but because of that time, it was stable from the beginning. Uh, so actually, we had a lot of bugs in the beginning, but all these bugs were mainly related to Magento, and especially Magento in a certain hosting environment. So a lot of these bugs were actually not related to Matrix because, um, well, but, but because we bring uh, Magento to the Joomla people, um, we still had to solve a lot of problems, uh, performance issues. And that was also the reason why uh, two months later we uh, released um, the Matrix 1.1 and a little bit later 1.2. Just adding more features because that's a nice uh, thing. But we also uh, tried to make the whole, uh, whole thing more stable. Uh, try to improve basically Magento but then using the Joomla method. Um, also uh, one uh, interesting thing was that we added uh, on a customer request, we added support for SH4047. Horrible name to pronounce. But we actually removed it again a bit later. Why? Um, the main reason was within uh, Joomla you have the routing functionality. So the core Joomla Seth is functioning because of this little file called the router.php, which every component is able to include. And actually, we put a lot of time into integrating, um, bridging the Magento Seth system with the Joomla Seth system. But as soon as we uh, added SH4047, it did not have compatibility with the default routing. And because of that, we had to do all the work over and over again. 
And actually with a couple of releases of SH4047, um, we had to well improve this, this router functionality and inspect it with every release. Um, well, and about half a year later we just gave up. And now our opinion is basically, well, every Ceph functionality like SH4047 or RTO Zoom Ceph or well, some others, they should um, maintain backward compatibility with the default router functionality that Joomla is offering. And actually, then I found out that SH4047 was not doing so, but Ceph Advance or RTO Joom Ceph or actually all the other Ceph components do. So actually we, we just said, well, all the other, the other Ceph components are doing their job properly, except for this one. And we had to do a lot of work just because they are too, too lazy to do the work properly. So, well, uh, after a while we just said, said, well, this is enough, this is where we draw the line. But it's, it's funny, like, well, um, within the feature set you can also see that you're just, uh, well, we're, we're looking for the right approach, uh, and etc. Well, I think uh, these features are just uh, showing a little bit about uh, the age of uh, Magebridge. But let's talk about the features a little bit more. Our approach was to um, offer a full integration. And a full integration started off with the integration of the theming level, so a visual integration. And a visual integration means that actually this block here is coming from Magento and it's being styled with Magento. So for instance, this, this orange color uh, and the, 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 the layout of these, uh, these uh, diffs, they're all based on the Magento theming engine. While the Magento theming engine is well integrated in the Joomla template. How do you integrate it with the library or No. Um, it's it's well it's I'm, I'm coming to that later on. Okay. Um, but it's actually a bridge connection like it should be. Uh, Joomla is making a connection to Magento and I is asking well I want to display this block and I want to display that block. And because I'm fetching HTML, oh I also need the CSS files. And on the way while you're at it, perhaps also integrate some menus and integrate breadcrumbs. So a lot of these requests are basically putting, put, being put into one single bridge request. That bridge request is being sent to Magento, handled, sent back. Um, but well, in the end, the most important thing is it's not an iframe. <laughs> because that's, that's not an integration. <laughs> Um, it's not an iframe, but it's also very flexible that actually if you see this and see this, it doesn't mean that Magento is being called upon twice, because that would be a uh, performance issue. Um, also, all the URLs here are changed from a Magento URL to a Joomla URL. So actually the visual integration was not only copying and pasting some HTML, but it was actually also changing the logic within uh, Magento itself. But the end result was a visual integration. Um, but that's not everything you can do with integration, because you can also take it to a more abstract level. And one of these things is that if you search within Joomla for content, so Joomla articles, etc., we also created the search plugin to search for Magento products. Um, also, if you um, uh, log in as a Joomla user, um, you're authenticated either against the Joomla database or the Magento database. Um, if your account is not yet working or not yet existing in Magento, in Magento it's automatically created. Or if your account is not working yet in Joomla, it's also automatically created. So uh, every functionality is basically, uh, basically being done uh, vice versa. Also if you change your password uh, in either Joomla or Magento, it's also changed to the other side. So the funny thing is also, if you choose to uh, put Joomla and Magento together, but after a couple of months you want to pull them from each other again, you have two separate systems which are still, still fully functional. Um, if you change your username on the Joomla side, it's being changed on the Magento side. If you change your first name in Magento, it's being changed on Joomla as well. Um, and last but not, last but not least, we also create a little uh, JCE plugin which allows you to uh, create a link to a Joomla or Magento or sorry, a Magento product or a Magento category. So it also makes it uh, much easier to work with on a more uh, well marketing level. So somebody responsible for blogs or uh, for, for news items is able to create a blog 
about a certain magenta product and easily select the magenta product, which is uh, what it is about. Um, well, the cool thing is this is only still step two out of three. Um, because actually we said we want to do a full integration. So actually step one and step two is the, the integration that you would expect. And then came up number three, and that was again more abstract. And that was basically the idea that, well, if we, if we have this connection between Juma and Magento, what can we do with it? And we came up with the idea of so-called uh, connectors. So within Joomla you have plugins, modules, components. But we wanted to add a, a fourth extension type specific for Matrix, and that's what it's called uh, a, a connector. And there are three types of connectors, product connectors, store connectors, and profile connectors. And I'm going to talk about that uh, a little bit later. Well, first, a little bit of facts of uh, a Matrix site. Uh, it's more complex than creating a Tienda show, for instance, because you have to worry about two different applications, plus, of course, the Matrix technology on, on top of that. So it becomes a little bit more uh, complicated. You have to install Magento, Joomla, and, of course, Matrix. Um, they have to configure everything. And one of the most important steps within uh, Matrix is that you have the bridge up and running, because as soon as the bridge is up and running, all these little gadgets uh, within Joomla um, are turned on, so basically, if you want to search for a Magento product, suddenly in the back end you get a pull-up cool scheme. Hopefully I can demonstrate it later on as well. And you get a pop-up so you can easily select the, the, the right uh, Magento product. So it's a little bit the same as um, pointing a menu item to a Joomla article. So this modal light box effect is also being used. Um, well, besides that, you have to configure everything. And, well, the most complicated uh, thing might be uh, modified theming. Because what I said was, Matrix is also integrating both themes. It's putting the Magento theme inside the Joomla template. And that's nice, because the Joomla template does not know how to style uh, a shopping cart. So that's why, if you put in the Magento theming, the, the shopping cart is immediately like, well, visual, uh, visual uh, available and it's, it's looking nice. But the downside is that there might be a conflict between Juma and Magento. Um, I'm getting back to that later on, but you can see already the technical terms. Uh, if it's just about CSS, well, you can add CSS to both Juma and Magento, so that's just, just the web design part. But as soon as you want to um, change the, the logic, uh, we decided not to change or not to bridge this Magento theming logic. But if you want to modify the Magento theme, you have to do it within Magento. So basically, MageBridge is not the perfect solution, it's a bridge. It's not a complete new e-commerce system. But if you want to use Magento in a more easy manner, then MageBridge is just migrating certain functionality from Magento to Joomla, but not the theme part. How much time do I still have? I have 20. Okay, well, let's start with um, some of the basic uh, concepts. Um, I think a lot of these points are just um, uh, your average uh, uh, Joomla development. Of course, you don't use uh, core hacks. Um, everything should be uh, according to coding standards. And well, while you're writing code, the documentation should be available as well. The technology is MVC, helpers, plugins, modules. But actually, this technology MVC is not really part of the core functionality of uh, Matrix because MVC refers to um, well some kind of view, the visual representation and abstract data on the other side. But actually the abstract data and the view are both coming from Magento. So that's the, the Magento theming part. You only cut and paste basically everything what is in uh, Magento to the other side. Specifically for uh, Matrix, and there's a loader uh, thing, and then there's this thing called a registry, a proxy, and a bridge. And basically the, the, the whole concept is that if there are uh, multiple parts on a page that uh, need to be integrated, so we have a menu on the left side, we have a component uh, right here, um, well another module perhaps on the left side, and here are the breadcrumbs. Um, basically, every extension which is forming that page 
is registering its request with Matrix. So every request for building the page is put together and then sent as a single HTTP request to the other side. So Magento is only started up once and that's hand being handled by the proxy. And while the proxy is really behaving like a, an average uh, a web browser, it's acting like uh, it's Firefox or something else. Um, and thanks to this proxy, every request being made by all these Joomla extensions are bundled, handled in one time. Magento is just interpreting this request in a certain way, the response is being sent back. And then, well, the bridge is just making sure all the data are um, put where they belong. Does that mean that uh, Magento can be on a different server? Exactly. Yep. Cool. Actually, I have some, uh, some other slides about the multi site functionality. Uh, can, can Magento be put on a different server than Numa? No, it's okay. Yep. Well, there's another slide. <laughs> uh, the license. Um, first of all, the, the Joomla part is uh, GNU uh, compliant and it's also um, uh, put on a subversion server. But the funny thing is, well, we're heading for the commercial aspect. Um, 195 euro is expensive in Joomla, but actually if you start searching for Magento extensions, uh, the price is just being put up. And actually then 195 euro for such, well, such a product is just a silly. Um, for instance, you know the pricing of the Magento Enterprise version, that's 12,000 euro per year. Um, so we are a commercial extension, um, and to protect our code a little bit, we did a licensing trick, because actually the GNU, GNU GPL is uh, fully compliant with Joomla, but, well, you know, might, might know about the discussions of the GNU GPL, as soon as one part is getting, well, GPL'd, Actually, all the other extensions have to be GPL as well. Well, there's a lot of discussion about it. And because of that discussion, Magento was actually released under the OSL, a different open source license, which states, well, Magento itself is open source. But actually, um, whatever Magento extension you build on top of it, you can use a different um, uh, license for that. You can even make it encrypted. Um, or you can make it uh, osl but not gpl because that would be a mix-in of the license. What we did was come up with our own uh, end-user license agreement, which basically states if you're a customer, you can use the code without problems. You can even distribute it to your own uh, developer, uh, but it's a commercial thing, so it's a copyrighted uh, uh, product. We're still also figuring out like, whether there should be different licenses with a lower price or perhaps even a, a, a cheap uh, or free version. But the point is that um, the first year we had so many problems supporting actually not Matrix, but supporting Magento on poor hosting environments. That actually all the money being asked for is, well, it's all ending up with uh, support. So it might be an expensive um, extension, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a, how to say that, uh, a choice we made um, uh, with a good reason basically to avoid needless support requests. But now we're uh, getting more experienced, of course, and maybe it's uh, changing sooner or later. Um, also, with that license, you get one license for six domains. And six domains is already referring to the multi-site principle, because we count it like, well, in a professional manner, you have a production environment, but also a testing environment and a development environment. So that's three. But then Joomla and Magento on different servers as well. So that's three times two is six. But we don't do license checks like if you have six or if you have five uh, or six different domains with on every domain one Joomla and Magento instance. Well, you can use it like that as well. And then of course the costs per site is getting less and less and less. But that's up to you. Uh, and about the upgrades, um, it's also including major upgrades. So for instance now uh, Joomla 1.6 is coming up and we don't charge uh, another amount of money uh, just because there's a major version uh, shift. We just keep on developing the code and actually Matrix, as it is right now, is already compliant with uh, Joomla 1.6 beta. It's not fully working, but that's mainly to blame on Joomla 1.6. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the visual integration. A visual integration is mainly that the component um, it is also more or less the content area within Magento. 
So if you look at the different, a lot of different applications, for instance Joomla, Magento, every time the, the main content area is on a certain page and uh, there are some side blocks on the left on the right. Uh, well, the side blocks on the left and the right are still being served by, by what Magento calls blocks. So within the Magento theming environment, everything is a block. Um, while in Joomla, they make the difference between a component and a module. Now the cool thing is we also created a so-called um, matrix custom block module. So that's a Joomla module being able to serve any Magento block. And the funny thing is that because the theming engine of Magento is very flexible, the same flexibility suddenly exists in, uh, in Joomla as well. Well, there's a search integration, there's a breadcrumb integration. So that's about the visual integration. Like I said before, um, the combined theming part involves that the Magento theming is being merged into the Joomla template. Uh, the Joomla template is quite easy if you look at the PHP code or just uh, some Jago tags. And they're both in the index.php file, so a single PHP file is serving the entire theme. But actually with Magento it's a lot, lot more complex. There are PHTML, PHTML templates and XML layout. But actually, if you want to modify only the theming part, so like the color of the shopping cart, or if you want to have the add to cart button in a different way, you can also, you, you, you just have to modify basically the CSS code to accomplish that. 10 minutes. And the CSS code could be modified within Joomla, which is easy, or it could be modified within Magento. It's up to you where you start hacking things in, and um, it's, it's just a very flexible thing. The downside is that there might be conflicts. So, um, for instance, a, a Joomla template might contain a div with ID is container. But Magento might contain or might have a container as well. And well, then you have two IDs in the same HTML code, so that's a problem. And the problem either needs to be solved on the Magento side or the Joomla side. Even worse, there's a conflict between MooTools and Prototype, and actually that's a more serious um, uh, conflict. Wherever there is MooTools on a Joomla page, Prototype won't work. Or if Prototype is loaded first, MooTools doesn't work. And that's a major issue, because basically when you build up a Joomla site, and you want to use a lot of gadgets based on MooTools, uh, suddenly the, the, the Magento checkout page does not work anymore. And it requires basically a different thinking about why would you want to use uh, Joomla. You want to use Joomla for the basic marketing, but the whole site is still about e-commerce. It's about selling products, and if you are if you are entering the Magento checkout, where the whole thing is about selling products, and, well, getting from one end to the other end, and at the other end you have sold or you have bought a product, then basically that is the main purpose of the page. And if you have like, some kind of little uh, Twitter gadget uh, just, just on top of it, well, it's, it's the wrong thought of the page. So actually, once you start, uh, start thinking about building websites professionally, this whole uh, JavaScript problem is actually not an issue uh, at all. Uh, I'm just going to skip this because there are some other cool, uh, cool things as well. And that's basically, basically coming down to the point of uh, the so-called connector. Um, I just explained earlier, like um, in, in Joomla you have uh, plugins, components, modules. Within MageBridge, suddenly you get a fourth extension type, and that's called a connector. And because of the connector, suddenly a membership or software, software subscription or a thing called private sales uh, immediately comes in, uh, in hand. Um, First of all, there's a thing called a store connector. Um, and to understand this, you actually require a little bit of knowledge of how Magento works. Because within Magento, there's this multi-site principle. And the multi-site principle means that you have three different levels to build, well, to, to, to have a scope with. That means you have a website within Magento, you have a website, you have a store, you have a store view. And if you want to have multilingual behavior, you use different store views, so an English store view, a French store view, and by well, selecting some kind of uh, selection box on the page, you can switch from the store view English to the store view French. But that whole principle goes on and goes on and goes on. 
Because you can also say, well, the English store view should be used if people visit from the UK, and then suddenly the default currency is in pounds. While if other people are visiting from another country, there's a different English store view using Euro. Um, Magento is very cool about that, and the only point that Matrix just added is that you can use Joomla logic to determine what kind of Magento store is being loaded. So one of the things is, if Joomfish says the current page is French, Matrix only has to load the Magento store called French. Um, you have to configure it yourself, but because this is so flexible, you set it up once, and then suddenly all these little tricks uh, come up because there's also a mage bridge connector while loading a specific Magento store on a, a specific day. There's also a specific store, uh, or yeah, a specific store could be used um, if a, a customer is belonging to a certain Joomla user group. Now, this is something I wrote within five minutes. And I immediately realized, well, this is a concept called private sales. And it's one of the main concepts of the Magento Enterprise Edition. So actually the Magento Enterprise Edition 12,000 Euro um, has the same functionality, um, but with Matrix it's a different approach, it's a different thinking, but uh, more or less the same. Um, even cooler, I think, is a product connector, which means if you purchase a Magento product, you can do something in Joomla with that customer, with that purchase. Which means as soon as a, a customer is purchasing a certain product, that customer is being added to a certain Joomla user group, and because of that, gets access to certain downloads or um, support certain pages. content. Hmm? Support, pages. support pages, yeah. Or you can uh, add that customer to, uh, to write its own blog, or add reviews, or something like that. Uh, the funny thing is, the, the possibilities are in that endless, and it's very easy to write a new connector. I'm just going to show you uh, later on, if I still have time, uh, five minutes. Um, show you some sample code, which is basically defining how it should be done. But it's so flexible that we didn't realize yet how many options are there. And the funny thing is, because of this, this connector architecture, um, well, basically we are, we are entering a, 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 another level of, of e-commerce, because Magento is about selling products Joomla is about content, but once you start mixing it up, you get very interesting um, uh, end results. So another thing is uh, memberships, newsletter subscriptions, that people have to pay five dollars to uh, well, subscribe to a certain uh, security newsletter, uh, and user rewards. And more and more of these connectors are actually looking like the functionality of Magento Enterprise, which is fun as well. Um, last but not least, and I think uh, we have to skip the demo because it's five minutes uh, left. Uh, perhaps later on I can give a demo anyway. Um, but just to, um, to uh, add a little bit more on, on the flexibility that we now have with, um, with MageBridge. You might know the concept of Joomla content plugins. So you add to your Joomla article a certain tag, and that tag is being translated into something else. Well, what you can do is add a Joomla tag to your Magento content and basically just, just translating that so you can add, well, for instance, um, uh, all videos uh, video to a product within Magento. Or the other way around, uh, Magento is also using the same tags and suddenly you can use all this, these uh, CMS tags within Magento again within uh, Joomla. And I just call it like an advanced concept because, well, the possibilities are, are uh, again endless, but you end up with a, a system that is perhaps a little bit too flexible. So that's also another thing to, uh, to be aware of. Uh, a little word on uh, the API. Well, basically, the API is based on HTTP, so it's going through uh, the web. And that's uh, offering uh, interesting uh, possibilities if you have. Uh, a full rack of different servers. Uh, Magento could be on one server, Joomla could be on another. But you could also have one Magento store and a Joomla site being served in Japan, another Joomla site being served in France, another Joomla site being served in, in, uh, in the US. And Google likes it when you visit the page from Japan and actually the server is also located in Japan. So the ge ge geographical benefit basically. 
And it's one of the things that, uh, uh, that, that Google is a little bit quiet about, but actually the same thing could be, well, this, this thing could be accomplished with uh, Magebridge and actually not uh, with, uh, with Magento. Well, the transport protocols are just um, JSON, XML, RPC, but it's not really interesting because, well, the bridge functionality is just working. You don't really need to know about it that much. Um, this is what I explained just a few moments ago. Um, another very flexible thing is, uh, well, I had to think of a name, and so I came up with the term event forwarding. What I explained earlier was that Joomla has up to 20 or 30 events, system events. Well, Magento has a couple of um, uh, hundred uh, of these events. Now, it came to my mind that, well, if there's an event being generated in Magento, you could forward that event through the big bridge and write a Joomla plugin to actually react on a Magento event. And that's very cool, but again, very flexible. And the more you do it, probably also the performance is getting a little bit down. So what you can do within MageBridge is just determine um, which event should be enabled and which should be not enabled. So there's an event to, um, to um, forward when the, the customer uh, record is being saved to the database. Well, that's interesting, but probably you don't want to use that event. But there's another event when the checkout is being completed. So once the customer enters the checkout, has paid, and then the, the, the checkout has been completed, that event could be forwarded to Joomla and uh, uh, play some, uh, some nice tricks with it. And we get to the last uh, slide, and that's the connector code. And the connector code is being uh, basically that in, in the back end of uh, Magebridge, you have a form, uh, a connector, like a plugin, um, first creates an element in that form, Second, it's able to handle the post of that form, and then suddenly, well, the, the certain functionality of that connector comes forward. And in this case, there's um, a store connector, so Magebridge has to determine which Magento store to load. And it's doing so by checking for, well, which uh, user is this, and if <coughs> is the user group configured for this actual instance, is it the same as configured in the database? As you can see, the code is limited. It's, it's just requiring a couple of lines. And, um, well, it's uh, pretty easy to write a new, uh, new plugin for that. Um, it was kind of stressful to run down through um, all these uh, different things. Um, and I'm just uh, skipping to the next slide as well. So, are there any questions <laughs> for about 20 seconds? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation. Um, after this, I'll be running around, and so if you want to learn a little bit more about Matrix, just ask a question. I have my laptop with it, and actually, without the beamer, it's functioning fine. So if you want to have a demo as well, it's, uh, it's also another uh, uh, possibility. So uh, that was it. Thank you.